Stevie, please explain to me how Trips and and Sean and Paul and all these people spent thirty years in the freaking business, and you you can't pass the eye test of looking at R. D. McDonald with his giant melon head and know this guy's never going to get over. I I don't understand it, Stevie. Brusosbrand.com, where the pros are the pros. Bro, you could mark down the date. Guys, I I I I I will I will I will quit this podcast. No. If this does not no, no, this is a trick. No, he wants to stop watching SmackDown. Let's let's I will (laughs) quit this podcast if this does not come to fruition. Write down the date, bro. Yesterday was April 29th, 2024. Write down the date, bro. Because whoever those two girls were that got called up to the main roster, and I already forgot their names because looking at both of them, there's nothing special about either one. If, you know, one one's got a hair, were- kinda, one's kind of got a hair dyed like a skunk. There's no difference between any of those two girls and any of the current girls on the roster. And one year from now, both of those individuals will not be over and be in the same exact spot they were last night. Bro, that that's bro. Literally, if you got five hundred thousand dollars, a million dollars in the bank, uh, go on DraftKings today and put all your money on that because they continue, bro, to bring up talent. And you talk about Shawn Michaels, you know, with the cowboy hat and the hugging and all that shit. Bro, if you can't look at people at this point in your career and say they don't have the it factor, they look like everybody else, and they're never going to get over, what, what have you learned in the last 30 years, Shawn? What what have you learned in the last 30 years? I can look at both of these females and know they're no different than Candice LaRue and Candice LaRue's partner, whatever her name. What's her name? Hermione Gingold. What, what's, her, what's her name? Yeah, was, that is, that's Hermione it. Gingold. There's no difference between any of these people, bro. Your call. Stevie, here's what I don't understand. Ben. Look at any major league sports franchise, any hockey, basketball, soccer, football, golf, uh, 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 frisbee, frisbee, uh, uh, golf. What, look up any sport in the world. Stevie, what sport brings up mediocrity? What, what sport brings mediocrity, mediocrity to the main roster? What sport, bro? You're either great and making the team or you're not. The me, it's freaking mediocrity after mediocrity after mediocrity of all these people. And I might go as far as to say nobody in that entire room will be over a year from now, bro. Nobody. I don't. Ben, I don't understand the system. We're bringing in mediocrity, mediocrity, mediocrity. We keep adding to the numbers, and nobody ever gets over. Bro, J.D. McDonough can literally go out there stark freaking naked every freaking week and never get over. These people are never going to get over. Can somebody please explain this process to me? The one freaking guy, bro, the the other foreigner who now is on the main roster, I don't give a shit what championship he holds in NXT. He's never getting over, bro. He's no different than Alistair Black. He's no different than uh, the, the other buddy, Buddy O'Doul, whatever. He's he's no different than any of those guys. 
But Stevie, please explain to me how Trips and and Sean and Paul and all these people spent thirty years in the freaking business, and you you can't pass the eye test of looking at R. D. McDonald with his giant melon head and know this guy's never going to get over. I I don't understand it, Stevie. Wow, I don't even I'm know sweating. where to start. I'm, I don't even know. I'm, I'm, I'm sweating. I'm I don't sweating. even know. I don't even know where to start on my. Oh, I mean, Mars. come on! Uh, it's every every single call up from NXT. They're normal looking people, bro. Well, I I, almost, I I guess I shouldn't bring up the girl cried when she got drafted. That might set you off again. Oh uh, my also, God! Is it, it is bad. It's bad. I can't, I can't God avoid, evil. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> I can't avoid the fifteen puns of looking eyes as you're talking about Sean. Dude, I'm just so gonna bad. stop right there. I can't. I can't do it anymore. It's like the the hottest fifteen minutes of a raw SmackDown. I mean, are you freaking kidding me with this shit? None of these people, none of them look like stars, bro. None of them. None. I do have a theory. Oh, I'm sweating, man. Consciously or subconsciously, we've brought this up before. And we just talked about Bubba and Devon. Bubba and Devon can be on TV, come out to the Dudley's music, and get a bigger pop than the top guys and girls in the company right now. Being away from the company for years and considered to be past their prime but still incredible workers and showmen. Is there still some kind of subconscious thing because the people in charge of scouting talent and evaluating talent were former top guys that would keep other talent down with Bro, their politics? Bro, it's Stevie, there's got to be something. There, there has to be a reason for this. They keep bringing people up that will never get over. And, and then for rely on then. Who do you rely on when they don't get over? Hunter, we need you to make it on camera. Sean, we need you to make an appearance. They keep themselves over in a way by by drafting up people that will never get. You're always going to need a McMahon, a Triple H, a Hunter, somebody to fill that gap on TV. This is rinse repeat since Bruce took over that time in Atlanta. They've been doing it since before that. And, and then there's something to that theory, Ben, because then then you look at a guy, you look at a guy that, okay, that guy can possibly get over. There's a history there, and there's bloodline, and there's a lot you can do with it. And then you give him the name Bron Breaker. So now you got a guy that actually looks like he can get over, but you give him a name where he'll never get over because you give him a ridiculous there's got to be something going on what Stevie said because, my God, Ben, I look at all these people and I know immediately they're never getting over, bro. I'm not going to sit here for oh much my longer. And, I'm, uh, I'm sweating, Ben. I'm sweating. <laughs> but you guys besmirch the good names <laughs> of Michael Hickenbottom and Paul Levesque. I'm just not going to do it. Um, I will resign No, uh, and then mix in the weird power play father figure that they're feeding off of there after years. And these kids have no idea because they weren't even alive when these guys were on top, most of them. And then they're keeping these kids in a pen to make them react because they really don't know. They really don't. They, this is the real reaction. They right, don't I know. I, I figured that out. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But now everybody's got to pop, like, because it's not their time. We're the locker room. You did it. Meanwhile, we're supposed to be feuding on the show, but we're, what are we really doing? Seeing if, like, they'll take direction or who's not happy about it when a heel should be like, oh, that bitch got called up. Like, they're fucking cheering them on and breaking fame so Sean can come up and do these meaningful I helped make your career. Remember when we played in the keys and you had to do ring crew? It was all worth it. Like, what the fuck are you even saying to these people who are crying on camera and then they show their, uh, <laughs> she's an evil witch who lives in chaos. <laughs> so happy. Are you going to roll? And like, what the fuck is this, bro? They, they, they are, and, and the rest of them, like, as I sit there, because I, allegedly went through developmental with with talent that was a lot more <laughs> seasoned professionals than any of these 
it, what is it? It's wrestling college. They all look like college kids, right? Pretty much exactly what it is. And they sit there and I look, okay, that person gets to go up to raw and be the next. Who was the girl who threw up on herself? Remember her? Kayla? Was that, was that her name? I, I can't remember. Uh, in the ring, the girl. Oh, she puked. obviously got over. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can't even remember. She yeah. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm ta- oh, talking oh, about? I, I know you, she's the bougie girl. I forget. Yeah, her name. But, but gone already. Right. So th- that girl who got called off. Alaya, her actress, Alaya, yeah, I sure. Think. Yeah. But you might as well be. Um, and <laughs> Those three girls are about to suffer the same fate. And then all the people behind them that are jumping up, get a snapshot of them now because 85% of those people will never make it to the main roster. And only maybe the 15% that do three of them out of maybe 10 that were there will ever get over to do anything in a storyline. The rest of them will be cast aside. And sometimes when you get called up to the main roster, it's just to put you through the meat grinder to go, and they never really had it. We gave them a shot and we tossed them out the door. But these high school graduation moments are a very strange uh, thing that they're mixing in with it, bro. And this is why people in what you had a conversation with Al Snow that was very poignant. I think Al cut you off a little bit to kind of save you from yourself because you can we can rant about these things that are absolutely true of what you're saying. But Al's been in that father position that Sean has been in. And when you're inside the bubble and these kids get cut, their minds are so fucked up. And most of them are already uh, from the Island of Misfit toys, bipolar personalities with generation useless fucking participation trophies for the last 20 years of their lives. So they're already fucked up with a social media addiction. But that one kid took his life after he got cut from FCW, bro, because they don't know what to do. That's how they define themselves. And when you see things like that, where... You know, Sean (laughs) can claim to be born again, Christian. He may have the best intentions. He loves to be the center of attention. So all these kids are going to kiss up and try and play the game to get over with the game with them. And then some of them are never going to get there. And he's working them the whole time to do what you guys said, to stay relevant. So there's so many layers of the deception inside the bubble. And then when it pops for some kids, they have no idea how to handle it. And that's why you see a Cameron Grimes type uh, situation or something worse that could easily happen. And they're setting it up by doing that kind of shit. Yo, bro, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, there's plenty more where that came from. As a matter of fact, right now, if you've never been a Patreon subscriber, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Russo TWC and grab a free week of Russo's brand. That's right. It's free. Patreon.com forward slash Russo TWC. What's up, Brand? This is Jeff Lane inviting you to come hang out with me over on Twitch. I'm live several nights a week playing games classic and new, currently going through Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, the new Contra game, and more. So check me out, Jeff Lane 22 on Twitch. Pick up Mike Durbin's Conan action figure, bro. Look how beautiful this thing is. I freaking love the packaging, man. Look at this. MikeDurbin.com, guys. Help Mike out, man. This is a beautiful action figure, bro. Beautiful. MikeDurbin.com.